Good evening, everyone. The Lapeer Community School Board of Education meeting is now called to order. We will begin with the closing of allegiance. Uh, Mrs. Navarro, would you please leave? Absolutely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mrs. Lamar. So I will help go ahead and turn it over to you, Superintendent Laundry, for our presenting school this evening. Thank you, Madam President. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Jeff Stanton, who's the principal at our summer campus, and we have a special performance tonight preceding our presentation, to yeah. which uh, Jeff will introduce us to. We always have a special performance. Never brought uh, some, some of our band members, but I'd like to introduce this is Alexis Johnson. Uh, she's actually a Peer East grad, and she's been a long-term sub for us all year in our band program, and has done a terrific job. And actually said to me earlier in the year, I said, you know, some kids, up and maybe play for the board and said, yeah, let's wait till April when we're presenting school. But uh, here, just kind of give a little wave, guys, when I call your name. Everybody name's not so you mess anything up. Logan Beck. Where's Logan at? There's Logan. Okay. Uh, Alex Calcutt. Back there. Miles Julian. There's Miles. Sarah Cableman. And Stephanie Cableman. And Abby Sandusky. And so they are actually members of our uh, jazz band club, or did I, is that what we call it, or no, rock band? <laughs> 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 yeah. I'd like the long-term sub to set the principal straight. <laughs> <laughs> you can see who's not musical. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I said they, they're going to come and play a quick number, a uh, minute or two, and uh, they're probably, I told them, you guys don't need to stay for the whole thing, so if they are on yeah. their way out, then. Or we could replace the board meeting with a full performance. I think. <laughs> oh no, we're not ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing on the loop. Yeah, we're we're yeah. promised a short loop. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to warm up and, and uh, give us a uh, 15 seconds of warm up and we'll be ready. Awesome. So oh. thank you. Two flat loops, quarter notes, straight. <laughs>
great job. Excellent. Thank awesome. you. Thanks yeah. for coming tonight. Shift out and uh, introduce my. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go for great. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. back to follow. But um, so I also brought Mrs. Allman, Karen Allman, uh, learning coach at, at Zimmer, and Darlene Gannon, learning coach. And Mr. Wrights, Russ Wrights is here. He wasn't going to be, but he's tracked. He's track coach, but he's tracked and he can so he can actually speak to some of the things we were going to talk about. Um, clicker here. Okay, so real quick, we always like to, to start with our, our board goal, and I just, I, as I normally do, I highlight some of your areas there. Learning Standard Instructional Model, which is what has been a district goal for us for, for several years now. Uh, and we're going to focus, so the, the next part of the strategy, professional development goals to foster deeper learning, this is kind of how we get there. And so we have a professional development meeting every month and we kind of plan it before the year starts and then we're going to do the same thing at the end of the year here. Um, and then the, the benchmark that we, we want to talk about tonight is our disciplinary literacy that we've been working on for a few years here at Zeller. Um, specifically instructional practices and disciplinary literacy. Uh, we're going to talk about student not student engagement, but student discussion, how we get the students to, the, to have discussion. Uh, and so that, that's our goal tonight. So we're going to talk about a little bit where we've been, where we're at now, and where we're headed next. So, so last year we were here, we did, if, if you were here last year, um, we talked about disciplinary literacy at one point a couple years ago. If you were here then, you got to come to these books. And it, it's pretty meaty. We talk about quite a bit of stuff in there, but we really focused on getting students to have discussions and have those conversations to deeper learn. It's research based, and if you know one thing about 14 year olds uh, in a classroom that's not easy to do is to get them to have conversations, talk, ask each other questions. If you saw them in the hallway, you wouldn't think that, but um, once they sit down in class, it's a little more tricky. So it's not easy to do. Uh, we picked a, a tough goal, and but it's one that, that is uh, you know going to be very important for them as they get older. And it's hard to get adults to speak in meetings and things like that too. So not just the kids. So we're going to tell you where we're at right now, where, where we've kind of done this year, and also where we're going to go next year. So we'll turn it over here at this point to Mrs. Allman. So I get the fun job of explaining one minute or less what is disciplinary literacy. So here we go. Well, Jeff is very exciting, isn't it? I had 30 seconds. <laughs> so um, we've been talking about it for a few years. It has nothing to do with discipline like behavior, right? So completely different. What it has to do with is as kids get older, their learning gets more specialized. Right, so they have to um, <coughs> think about the different disciplines that they're studying. So the discipline of history, or of science, or of mathematics. And that learning gets more and more specialized as they go through. Just like that, it's not once, you're, once you learn to read in third or fourth grade, you're done. You need to keep learning different reading and writing and communication skills. And those get more specialized too. So the way that a historian reads a primary source document is so different from the way a scientist might read a research study. They look for different things, they have different purposes, and our job is to try to make that clear for our kids so they can practice that too. So we started with the concept of discussion and how discussions might look different in different disciplines. And we want to take you back to where we were before so we can show you where we're at now. So, Alright, so I joined the Zummer team this fall. And when I joined them, um, Jeff and Karen took the time to kind of share with me, again, where they've been and kind of the idea and goals of where we want to go. So with that, after the staff talked about the Learn About Disciplinary Literacy, they decided together that they really wanted to focus on kids developing and asking questions, really get the kids talking. So in 2020-21, um, in order for them to do that, staff began to participate in a scavenger hunt and they learned best practices um, and they learned strategies to use with their kids. And then once they learned strategies, they went to the kids and taught the kids. And then from there, the kids decided, okay, or staff and kids decided, let's formulate some success criteria. And then they took some time to video 
and film, and then have conversations about what they were seeing in all the different classrooms. So then last year, in 2021-2022, um, there were a couple staff members that came here to talk to you guys about their question techniques that they were using. Um, you saw, you heard from a math teacher as well as a science teacher, and they shared with you that you know that they were seeing and gaining good success. So from there, the staff decided, okay, from all these strategies that we learned, there's a couple really good ones that we've all been using, so let's really hone in and focus on those. Which takes us to this year, where they really have honed in and strengthened on um, some specific skills that Russ and um, Aaron are going to share with you. So when we were planning for the presentation this year, I said to Jacqueline, I don't know what we're going to talk about because we're doing the same thing we did last year, the same thing we did the year before. So just coming to talk about year three, and the more we talked it through, we kind of realized we're really at the point of refining our practice. So a couple of years ago, we were trying all different kinds of things, throwing it at the wall, seeing what stuck. And last year, there were some new strategies that people were really kind of taking on. And this year, I feel like what we're experiencing a lot in the building is looking at the things that maybe you've been doing for years and years, and how can you make space in those existing things for the students to take more ownership over the, the discussion. Um, and so we were going to tell Russ a story tonight because Russ, the track coach, was going to be at his first track meet today. Mm -hmm. um, the weather didn't cooperate. <laughs> <laughs> it did, actually. We could have had a track meet. Yeah. 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 We, we didn't know that at the time. So, yeah. <laughs> so Russ is here with us. So Russ and I are going to tell the story of what's been going on in this last few months. So you want to yeah. jump in? So the, the way this came about, we have kind of an interesting challenge in the language class because People are like, oh, get to the deep, deep meaning, get to the deep, deep. Well, my kids can't do that. We want them to stay in the target language. That's our whole goal, right? The more we speak in Spanish, the better we are. And we're not going to discuss philosophy in Spanish. We're not going to come up with these deep, deep questions. So what we did is we sat down and said, hey, you know, how can I work this in more? For years, I've done a thing on Fridays, which is called Cheese Mix. And it's the first five-ish, ten minutes of class where the kids get to talk about what they want to talk about in Spanish. And they basically just talk about the upcoming week. So I would stand at the front of the class and I'd say, okay, and I'd have up on the board. You can't really see it, but I have my projector up there. I have like some prompts for them just to kind of help them out a little bit. And I'd say, hey, what are you guys doing this weekend? And kids would raise their hands. So you would raise your hand and you'd say, oh, I want to play video games. And then I would start with lots of questions. Oh, what video game are you going to play? Who are you going to play video games with? How long are you going to play video games? I can ask literally like 50 questions about video games. <laughs> but, but it was a good idea, right? That's what they want to talk about. You're going to go to the movies. What movie are you going to watch? Where are you going to go with? How many you know, minutes are you going to watch a movie? All kinds of questions. But I was doing most of the work. They were really good at answering the questions, but we talked and we said, that's a really one-sided thing, right? The kids need to learn how to ask the questions because otherwise, they're going to be really great. They're going to go out, they're going to make friends, and they're going to sit there and say, come on, keep asking me questions. And finally, the friends are like, this is a really boring conversation. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just fine. So yeah, we sat down. And we, we thought, how can we make it so that the kids are the ones who are asking the questions? Yeah, and also kind of to increase the number of kids participating. Yeah. So you, we, you brainstormed some ideas, but before we got started, um, Russ asked me to come into the just to kind of take some, some data, some bits and notes, and here's a little quote from Russ in case he wasn't here. But yeah. And we're in the library. Yeah, so I so, said, yeah, that's basically what I want them to I just said that, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> a, a great PowerPoint is when people read to you. <laughs> So, um, Russ had me come in and he said, just watch Cheese Maze once and just kind of take some notes on it. So, that day that I was there, he asked the volunteers, there were five kids, and he offered okay. candy. In my defense, kids. though, yeah. I went to the quietest class. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I get kind of like in the 10 to 12 range, but you came like the quietest. I mean, I had no more Yeah. So, so, then we were kind of thinking about, um, so, like, how does that, do other kids, the ones who aren't participating, do they get anything out of this from listening to the conversation? And we're like, how can we measure that? So we thought about, of the number of exchanges, so the time that Russ and the student would talk back and forth, so he has a question, the student answers, that's one exchange. So in that one class, we saw 18 exchanges overall, but that worked out in the average of the kids in the class to like less than one, right? So we know that some kids participated, some just listened. So overall, like, there wasn't a lot of stuff happening for everybody. Right. I'm pretty engaging. She yeah, felt like yeah. other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to look at the data, I mean, 
I'm sorry. Your character's data is all skewed. I bought my own power. Did you watch the other back of the building? No, it wasn't here. Yes. So, when we were talking to the kids about, here's, we want to try something different. Brush shares to these things with the kids. Yeah, so we have to get them to buy into it, right? Because the old way is pretty easy. I do most of the questioning, and, and kids obviously are very comfortable answering, answering the questions because they hear the same questions over and over and over, right? So basically, we just shared a couple slides with them and said, you know, it's easy when you just sit back and we do the work. The, the real learning takes place when you have to be an active part of the conversation. And so we put this slide up there just to kind of motivate them. And then we talked about it. People have seen this before, right? Where Hey, you know, when you teach others, you're getting 90% out of it, whereas if you're just listening, um, obviously you're passive learning, you get a lot less out of it. And, and I think it helped because we tried to tell the kids there's a reason we're making a change. You might not like it a lot at the beginning, but it, it's good for you. And, well, you'll see in a minute. Yeah, so this is what we did. So, again, there's another quote from us. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, what we did is, is we came up with a new way and we made it kind of a pagan strategy. Because we sit in our table groups so and we have four people and we clearly spelled out for them, okay, this is everybody's role. So you're number one, number two, number three, number four. So number one's going to go first and you have to do what you've already done. They're, they're very comfortable saying, like, I'm going to go to the movies, I'm going to play video game. But then the challenge was the other three kids had to then come up with a question for them. So to try to make it easier on them, Karen was really nice and she made some really nice cards for them and we laminated them and we used them every week. We just spread them out on the desk. And to take the stress out of it, you have to literally grab the question and hold it up. And we put it in English so there's no like, uh, I don't know what the question word was. And then the kids hold it up. So now you say, I'm going to go to the movies, and then I have to find a question word that works. I hold it up and I have to say with, you know, to you, with who? Now we're working towards getting them to say, with who are you going to the movie? With whom are you going to the movie? <laughs> but I'm just happy right now if we can at least get the with who. And then my turn's over. Now person number two, what's another question would you could ask? Oh, when are you going to go to the movie? Their favorite one to ask is why, because then kids, it's harder to answer a why question. So we practice that. We're going to answer them because it's fun, because I like it, because I want to, or, or just the answers like that. And then that's it. And then person number two, now it's your turn, and we work around. Yeah, so I think you have, there's a before, so there's Ross in the front of the room, like begging somebody, please, you know, say what they want to do, and so it would be one student, and then <laughs> 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 So, but then we try to make a little diagram to explain it. So, let's say student two is the one who's saying, Hey, here's what I'm doing this weekend. So, student one asks him a question, student two replies to him. Now, student four asks him a question, student two replies to him. Student three asks a question, and then student two replies to him. And then it goes around, so every student is the one that gets to talk about their weekend. So when you think about it, we're looking at the number of just back and forths that are happening, just how it grew. Oh, wow. Exponentially. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's some of our students. Yeah. It, it, the, the interesting thing, like at the beginning, so Karen came, I don't know, six weeks ago or whatever it happened to be, and they were pretty hesitant. Like, it was a little uncomfortable that first week, and, and I really had to kind of like make sure I was next to them to kind of push them along. And then she came to take these pictures on the last week or something like that. And she could tell the difference. They are much more comfortable doing it now. Um, and we've only done it, like I say, five or six times, roughly in a new way, I think, is how many times we've done it. Yeah, we stood on Friday morning. So, um, yeah, it seems to be working out pretty well. They're asking the questions now. So we, we kind of compare the old to the new data. So just looking at the number of exchanges, I came back for another class. We had that 18 exchanges the old time. There's about 150 happening in the new time, yeah. right? Um, the, the exchanges for students, just that average, just kind of seeing how everybody's impacted more. And then this is my favorite one. So how many people participated went from five that one day, or just that one day, to every single kid in the class was talking about their plans and asking other students questions. So yeah, same, same period of time. Uh, this probably takes a little bit longer, not much, because, I mean, everybody's doing it at the same time, right? So in the span of five minutes, these four kids Oh, you're not all... Oh, yeah, we do it at the same time. time. Okay. Yeah, okay. so you do it, you do it, you do it, you do it. So they probably spend, I've never timed it, six, seven minutes for their part. And then we still come back together as a group, because it is fun for me to know what the kids are doing. Um, I mean, I learn things about them, and then I get to still model. This is how you ask a question, things like that. Um, and I would say the number of kids who want to volunteer now has probably gone up as well. They just feel a little more comfortable. So, um, 
Um, yeah, but that's what it all came out of. We just thought, how can you ask more questions? And Karen's fun to work with, and way to win. Same quiet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was the same quiet fourth hour class. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think I'll be feeding for lunch with their quiet. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. that's so. Yeah. Pretty much. It, it really is cool when you see it in action with, with, with kids and they're having those conversations. And, and like I said, the research really shows that uh, it, it does impact their, their learning if they're part of it and they're asking the questions and, and involved in it. So um, that's not just an isolated example. We also, we do instructional rounds every year where we have the principals and administrators all get together and visit the other buildings. Uh, and one of the things we look at is, is kind of what's going well and what are some next steps. And this year we did the instruction rounds in February. And we did see that, um, you know, all of the administrators that were there did see 100% of room showing evidence of the essential practices of one and six. So teachers are trying it. It's, it's, it's not easy to, to learn new things in, in any, any profession, but with teachers as well. And, and um, I think that, that we're really proud of that. To see that. We also had a Kagan coach. I know you guys have had a lot of Kagan um, demonstrations and those kinds of the, uh, from our other other buildings you know, when they were presenting. And the Kagan coach was really impressed with with the staff at Zimmer and the student discussions in the classrooms felt really genuine. This is what she had said, like they're part of regular practice. And she, this is her job. She goes to different schools and. And help schools and, and gives feedback, and, and she was really impressed. So we, we were proud of that too. Uh, but you see it happening every day in the building, um, and I think that I'm the one that's in, in most of the classrooms and seeing it happen, and, and uh, you know, sharing with with teachers what what I see, and and I think that they see the impact of it too. So, uh, what's next? Well, we, you know, like I said, it's not easy. It's it's something that. Uh, we can have a goal for 100% of our kids are going to be here talking in class every day. Uh, how realistic that is, but we still have some work to do. And I think we realized that when we started working on this, that this is, uh, we picked a hard goal. And you know, that's one of the reasons we picked it, because when we talked about it, it's what the staff said, this is something that the kids need to learn how to do. So uh, as I mentioned, though, there's, there's lots of other areas of disciplinary literacy, uh, research-based instructional practices, and, and the plan next year is well, at the end of this year is we're going to get together with staff again. Staff will collaborate, take some surveys. What do we want to do? Where do we want to take this next year? Um, and, you know, there's other areas in vocabulary and other things that you've probably seen here from the other buildings. Uh, we'll have questioning, student questioning, and, and participation in that as, as part of it. So my goal is to be back here next year and, and maybe touch on where we're at. And, and over the course of the next uh, couple of years, you in the last couple of seasons, you know, I really see it, I think the teachers see it, I think the, uh, the other principals do see it too, in their buildings as well. So, thank you for having us, and um, that's, that's it, that's what we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? I just wonder what the presentation would have been like if Russ didn't cancel the track. <laughs> <laughs> just to finish, I kind of, I have been way better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that's wondering if it's the we have. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have enough time to go back. <laughs> yeah. The one thing you guys make mention of, you know, talking about, and I think Karen mentioned it, you know, this is the same thing we talked about last year. Um, that's music to my ears, right? Because we have, we're guilty in this profession of the latest and greatest trend. And as a former teacher sitting in the PD, you know, uh, masses waiting for the latest and greatest administrative Know, trick or trade that you know all of the arms are going to chase after next it's nice to have i would imagine it's nice for us right the board gets to see some consistent practices being applied over time and the difference that we're looking at is a the growth we see and b the depth to which you can get into some of these things because we've always been guilty of a mile wide and an inch deep so we're those of us who are educators are add by our nature and, oh, a new book came out, a new video came out, a new program was released, it must be better. And we kind of spin our wheels a lot, I think, in this profession because of our lack of focus. So to hear someone say, 
this is the same thing you heard last year, it's a different twist on it, it's literally music to our ears because we know that the real growth happens when we dive deeper into that so, You know, Russ, I'm sure that he would speak to that the only teacher that's applying this stuff, but okay, what's the next day of the week I'm gonna focus on our next activity that I can that I can drill down into this these kinds of results. So that's why why would we to that end change gears? It's working. Well, we can try and sell them some years, too, right? Like they have to say, you're good at it this year, but then some years next year. They don't know how to do it. One of my biggest complaints in education is exactly what Matt said. It's like we get a new book and then we put it on the shelf and we never go back to it again. So I totally agree, but yeah, it's, it's so refreshing to see it's one of them. Yeah. used again. Mm -hmm. And the questioning, and I mean, I know I say a lot from college perspective, but we want students to talk. I mean, you're not going to be effective in the workplace if you don't know how to talk. And sure. so, we spend a lot of time, I know I put my, my students all the time in groups, and, and I love, I never saw that uh, percentage report, but that was really interesting, about 90%. You know, I'm always saying my students need to tutor, because tutoring makes sure you know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. you, know? sure. you can teach it, guess what, you know it. So, um, that's just, like I said, that was really refreshing, and I appreciate your presentation, because it was candid and real, and it was very enjoyable, so thank you. I just think the techniques that we can continue to bring into our students are so resonating. I just, I'm sitting here thinking about myself at work and I'm at a little, um, I'm at a little suffering because I didn't practice my Spanish as long as I should have <laughs> after graduation. And um, I'm just thinking about those techniques in the classroom would have been much different, I think, for me as a student, myself, thinking, I could carry those techniques through my professional career and carry on. You know. I believe Russ is available for our school. <laughs> <laughs> because I do, I do, I uh, really do feel that I am at a deficit right now. I am like in a lot of meetings and I'm the only one that speaks English. So I feel bad making them speak English when I should be practicing my freedom. So. I'm going to say, well, lots of years of Spanish in high school. But. Yeah, I took three years of Spanish in high school and never didn't have any type of engagement like you. Like, I mean, exactly. to me, because I remember giving a book and some and just don't they so long I don't remember. <laughs> but, I mean, that's like, like I took three years of Spanish. <laughs> They're actually engaged with each other, and that you're, you know, incentivizing them by, hey, let's hear about how you, what you're doing this weekend, and to throw stuff at them that they're not boring in the, you know, on the curriculum, like, hey, let's let's go off off script here, let's talk about this, and I just think that it's wonderful, and I wish I had a teacher like that back when I was in Spanish all those years ago, thirty some years ago. But I appreciate what you're doing. I think it's that wasn't us. Awesome. Three years ago? No, when no, I was in third year. <laughs> that's that's the point. Yeah, it just started. Out. I think the other piece is in the very beginning, you mentioned about the kids do a really good job talking in the hallways to one another, right? And you're taking that and pulling from there and using it in the classroom. So the behavior they're comfortable with, you're using those techniques to make them comfortable with and have them be a part of their education. So that's really good. 14 year olds don't want to put themselves out there in front of 30 year olds. No. Just something that they might be not right with. Yeah. So. The true learning happens when they can apply. Mm -hmm. so, and so that's not always, it's not always effective use of time to allow for that application. Um, so this is a really great thing. And two, when you stay with something for more than a minute, you know, you, the value just increases. I hope that it's like the students are going to be telling that if you teach them that too, and that just helps us kind of really push that one up. So, and that's love the band too. The band is great. Oh, great. Very good yeah. treat. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we will then go ahead and move into our public comment this evening. Board meeting is a meeting of school district business held in public. It is not a public meeting. The board is not going to respond to those making public comments.
comments, but we'll direct the superintendent to follow up with the presenter. 30 minutes is set aside for public comment, so each presenter is being asked to keep their comments free. The board does not comment in public on any student or employee and asks the presenter to be respectful of any person they comment about. So, Christy Mortal. Hi, um, I'm Christy Preston. Uh, <laughs> well, I am not, no, it's more now, but uh, Alan has <laughs> uh, vice president, and um, I get elected to do this because I don't mind speaking. <laughs> or I'm lucky, I don't know. Um, I am lucky tonight to present a, a member of the month award to Shell Alvis. She is the um, food secretary here in this building, and she's been working for Lapeer Schools for six years. Um, I'd like to ask her to come up. Yeah. <laughs> her co-workers talk about her um, kindness when she talks to parents and how much she enjoys her job. <laughs> she um, has been um, a parrot in some buildings, a building parrot, and she moved into Nikki Shoes and um, big shoes. <laughs> that, was, that was a little hard to fill, but it was so nice that she had her year in the building and could mentor her, and she's been a great addition to our faculty here. So our, um, our word is with you. Shall we do the same No. <laughs> our public comment section for this evening. We will head into our committee reports. Mrs. McKenna, would you like to share with us the personnel committee report? Uh, the personnel committee met on March 17th at 305 p.m. by a Zoom. Mm -hmm. The committee members were Abel Lamar and Summer Putnam, absent from myself. Others attending were Matt Wandry, Kim Siegel, and Mary Moss. The meeting was called to order at 305. Uh, bargaining update, the committee met to discuss bargaining. Principal transition plan can review the transition plan for the replacement of the current Murphy principal who will be residing after spring break. The board will be updated as more information becomes available. LEA staffing, staffing allocations for the 23-24 school year were sent to building administrators earlier this week. Ongoing declining student enrollments and a decline in grant funding will lead to reduced positions for the fall of 2023. And the meeting was adjourned at 336. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Mrs. McKenna. Next, Mrs. LeVar, would you please share with us the Teaching, Learning, and Technology Committee report? Yes, the TLT committee met on March 22nd, and we started at 3.05 p.m. Committee members present, April LeVar, Jamie Hofer, and Tim Lipka. Others attending were Matt Laundry, Michelle Bradford, and Mary Moss. The meeting was called to order at 3.05 via Zoom. The committee discussed the bargaining updates. The committee met to discuss bargaining and field trip requests. The committee reviewed the following overnight out-of-state field trips. LHS Boys Varsity Golf Team to Mount Pleasant on May 12th and 13th of this year. And the LHS Boys Soccer Team to Strongsville, Ohio on July 28th through 30th of this year. The committee is recommending that these trips be approved by the full board at the April 5th, 2023 board meeting and the meeting adjourned at 327 p.m. Any questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Lamar. Next, we have uh, Dr. Novak. Would you please share with us the policy committee report? Sure. On March 24th uh, of this year at 1 p.m., we met uh, via Zoom. Um, and with myself, as chairperson, Jamie Hofer, and Mike Watson, others that attended were Kim Sieferly, Mark Rader, Erica, Erica Henderson, Jennifer Sindel, and Mary Moss. Uh, the meeting was called to order at one, and um, we talked about the student assistant programs, policy number 5531. Uh, Kim discussed changes to the sport policy. Uh, the changes are being recommended in this policy in order to align with current practices. 
Um, this information was also shared um, in our full board report um, for the week ender. It was the consensus of the committee to recommend approval of this policy. It will be added to the tonight's agenda for first reading. Uh, we also discussed the administrative guideline um, 6423, use of credit, debit, purchasing cards. Um, we discussed initially this part or this agenda, I'm sorry, it's a guideline at the February committee meeting. Um, the com committee will continue to discuss recommended changes and the topic will be added to the April committee meeting for further discussion. Any proposed changes to this AG from other administrative and or the committee, or from either administration or the committee, will be shared prior to the meeting and our meeting adjourned at 121. Okay, any questions or comments? <coughs> okay. okay, thank you, Dr. Hobbit. And then lastly, Dr. Watson, would you please share with us the Finance and Operations Committee report? We met on March 24th uh, this year uh, via Zoom. Myself, Lisa Novak, and Summer Putnam. Others in attendance, Mark Brader, Kim Schieffer, <laughs> Eric Henderson, and Mary Moss. Meeting called to order at two. Um, we discussed a uh, bargaining update, um, which we discussed in a few of the others. Not much change there. Um, the bus bids, uh, bud bids are a little different. Um, so bus bids, uh, Mark Brader reviewed a bus purchase recommendation for the 23-24 school year from Transportation Director Linda Thompson. She is recommending going to Hoekstra, Hoekstra Transportation to purchase four used buses. Hoekstra provided a full package which contains three 77 passenger buses uh, from 2021 with less than 45,000 miles <coughs> at a cost of 75,600 each. One 60 wheelchair passenger bus with air conditioning with less than 45,000 miles at a cost of 72,450. This meets all of our requirements and specifications with a total bid of $299,250. It was a consensus of the committee that the board approved the bid for four buses at a cost not to exceed the $299,250. The bus bids will be placed on tonight's agenda. Uh, the building vaults. Mark Grader reviewed the information regarding building, se building security vaults, which was previously discussed at the March uh, meeting. Uh, these vaults would be located in the school resource officer's offices and would hold safety items to be used in emergency situations. As promised, additional information was shared with the board uh, the March 10th weekender. It was the consensus of the committee to proceed, and this is placed on tonight's agenda for board consideration as well. We adjourn to 253. Okay, any questions or comments? Thank you, Dr. Watson. Okay, that concludes our reports for this evening. We will head into our action items. The first is a consent grouping, and it has the approval of minutes of the March 1st, 2023 meeting. Overnight uh, state trips. The LaPierre High School Board's varsity golf team to Mount Pleasant, Michigan on May 12th through 13th of this year. Um, the LaPierre High School Boys soccer team to Strongsville, Ohio on July 28th through the 30th of this year. Strike Zone Robotics team to Houston, Texas on April 19th through the 24th of this year. Then we have the first reading of board policy 50, or 5531 student assistance program. Second reading of board policy 5350, student welfare, and the LCISD parent advisory committee representative. <clears throat> Is there any consent grouping items anybody wishes to be removed from the agenda? Okay. I'll make a motion that the reading of minutes and the policies be waived <clears throat> and the consent agenda. So far. Okay. I just had a quick question. Sorry. The strike zone, but I didn't see that in the CLT for the. It was. That came in after. That came in after. Oh, I saw those emails that they can't meet. Oh, okay. I, I was just curious. Sorry. Okay. Anything else? No? Okay. Dr. Novak? Aye. Mrs. Hofer? Aye. Mr. Lenka? Aye. Dr. Watson, Aye. Mrs. Labar, Aye. Mrs. McKenna, Aye. and Mrs. Putnam is going to abstain from this. Um, and the reasoning is, is because the parent 
parent advisory committee representative is my sister. So I thought it was the right thing to do for this evening. Okay, we will head into our next action item, which is the bus bid. Do I have a motion? I move that uh, four used buses be purchased from Hofstra Transportation for an amount not to exceed $299,250. Okay. I have a motion and a support. Any discussion on this motion? Okay, hearing none. Dr. Novak? Aye. Ms. Hooper? Aye. Mr. Lipka? Dr. Watson? Aye. Mrs. Labar? Aye. Mrs. McCann? Aye. Mrs. Butler says aye. Motion carries. Okay, next we have the new social studies book adoption. I'll make a motion that the middle school social studies, social studies textbook exploring geography and global issues, world history voices and perspectives, and the United States history voices and perspectives be approved as presented for adoption. Support. Okay, I have a motion and a support. Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, I have a motion and a support. Any discussion on this motion? Aye. Ms. Hopper? Aye. Mr. Lipka? Aye. Dr. Watson? Aye. Mrs. Labar? Aye. Mrs. McCann? Aye. Says I. Motion carries. Then we have the new math book adoption. I make a motion that the high school math textbook Big Ideas be approved as presented for adoption. Support. Okay. I have a motion and a support. Any discussion on this motion? <coughs> Hearing none. Dr. Novak? Aye. Ms. Hofer? Aye. Mr. Lovka? Aye. Dr. Watson? Aye. Ms. Lamar? Aye. Ms. McKenna? Aye. Ms. Tottenham says aye. Motion carries. Okay, and then lastly, it looks like we have the security vaults. I'll make a motion that the building security vaults be purchased from 360 Life Safety for an amount not to exceed $27,000. So. Okay, we have a motion and a support. Any discussion on this motion? Okay. Hearing none, Dr. Novak? Aye. Ms. Hofer? Aye. Mr. Lipka? Aye. Dr. Watson? Aye. Mrs. Lobana? Aye. Mrs. McKenna? Aye. Mrs. Tucker says aye. Motion carries. Okay, I think that concludes our action items for this evening. Are there any um, board member comments? Or can I open it up for that? Um, both Greg Dorman and Camaras uh, meet this weekend, uh, state level, uh, SDSU, if anybody would like to go watch them. They're both phenomenal teams and doing very well. So, very proud of their last weekend. They both come home with the first place. So, this is a great That was awesome. I'm gonna, I'll jump on that. Um, we ended up watching that from home because they have the uh, streaming, you know, you can stream. And we watched it all day on Saturday, and it was awesome. It's actually incredible to watch. You've never been. Yeah. A lot of yeah. You got to go. Yeah, it was amazing. It is, um, it is really much fun. Just watching the, you know, the stuff. Um, it was crazy, and it it came down to the very last match, you know, for uh, Canaris, and and the team the team was coming from the losers bracket was the number one seed, and they were just like blowing it out of the water everywhere. They're killing it. And I'm like, man, this last match is tough because they started all over and they have to be a two out of three in the last one. So they each won one, comes down to the very last match. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh man, we need, we need that other team to have a robot that flips upside down. You know, guys, <laughs> sure enough, their best robot flips over immediately. And then I'm like, what? And then within an eighth of a second, he goes, no, puts his arm out, flips back over, and I went, Oh, geez, people. <laughs> a couple matches ago, Robot was on his side. He was there the whole time, just dead and out of commission. This one immediately, like, I was like, it was like Transformers. Like the second generation guy. I was like, holy crud. But yeah, Craig's trying right right to say he's rooting for the success of our students and the failure of others. <laughs> right. No, we had the best match we had the, the previous one. I'm like, what? I don't know how they can do any better than they just did. So. But no, it was great. It was it was amazing to watch. And then, like I said, we watch White Mountain and this robot gets right back up, and you're like, "Wow, these kids are good." Yeah, <laughs> these so are, good. It was amazing. It really was. So yeah, we spent our whole day watching that. That was fun. So, yeah. so anybody wants to watch it? Uh, the the Blue Alliance. 
and then uh, you just gotta find, you can either type in the team name that you wanna look at, or you can go, there's four different locations, meaning it's all SVSU, but there's four fields, and I know that strike zone is not uh, consumers. I think DTE is coming out as well. Cool. It's going to be an amazing. Is this states? Is this? This is states. States. Okay. And so this is in preparation to go to Houston, right? To the World Championship. So wow. I hope they both make it. Yeah. Great experience. We've sent one. We've sent one team. We've never sent both the worlds have we? Last same year they year. both went in St. Paul. Yeah. Okay. okay. And most people that are not the pair. I drove them down. That's how you know. <laughs> <laughs> I drove the robots out here. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank the Zimmer Jazz Band Club for attending tonight and performing very well in front of the audience here. And I would also like to uh, segue into uh, the LHS Jazz Band under the direction of Dean Hunt late last month, uh, just before we all went for spring break. They had a state competition in Blue Hill Hills at the high school there, and they received all ones. Wow. And the the guy that analyzes them and talks he goes he was so impressed he he was so impressed he said something to the effect of everybody wants to be like you guys because you guys did that good everybody is chasing you because you were that good and he spent more time than what we were allowed like you're only supposed to, have to spend a half an hour this guy was pushing like 45 minutes and our competition didn't start until 8 p.m. We didn't leave Bloomfield Hills and it was on school night until close to 10 o'clock at night. And those kids were just so impressed and just, he just, try this, try this, try that. Our soloists all received such wonderful content and just wonderful praise. And he was so complimentary to appear. And I just want to make sure that our community knows what amazing amazing music program that we have here in the pair and uh, robotics, music, we got it all. These are awesome. There we go. Anyone else this evening? No? Okay, I'll turn it over to you, Superintendent Wong. Uh, thank you. Just uh, did all about what everyone said about the kids that are competing outside of the classroom. It's such an important part of the uh, learning process. And, you know, to see kids uh, excel in the pair is always a rewarding thing. Uh, I want to thank Michelle uh, for the book adoption process. It's long, it's a lot involved. The teachers that were part of that process as well um, in piloting the various textbooks and materials. It is, it's a lot of work, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're getting to be, right, on a live subject, so to speak, and the teachers included in that as they are doing their best effort to um, put forth a good faith effort to you know, attempt to utilize all the resources available. So Michelle is able to bring Forward all that work and the data and the support of the boards, so we appreciate the board support of that process. And thank you. Um, and then finally, Jeff, uh, great job leading your staff. And I think we, we've got some good feedback from the board to share with, with your staff as it relates to um, you know, this work. I think sometimes it, it's easy for us to be in the hall, not just in the district, but to get in your own building sometimes, and you don't get an opportunity to kind of venture out. The board has a very unique position to where they see. Of the 360 degree view of a district, um, both from a community member's perspective and some people who are intimately involved with our programs. Um, so we see all the presentations, right? They go to countless events and they're in the buildings and they see what's happening. Um, and there's good things happening there. And sometimes we, we tend to focus on the warts of whether it's a school or a district or an organization. And we tend to lose sight of the fact that there's really good things happening. You only need one small story like what happened in Russ's classroom to realize that. And we know that's happening on a much larger scale there. So please, please um, share that sentiment with, with your staff and as you continue to work because this is not an easy time to do that work. And uh, Russ, the only question I have for you, and this is a yes or no question. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned at the outset that the old method, um, you did a lot of work, you responsible for a lot of that work. Are you doing less work now? <laughs> to the degree, to the degree that I said, caveat there. The answer is yes. The 
The answer is yes. Yeah. But then we still come back together. So right. Right. It's it, it, it's kind of a hybrid. But initially, hard to set up because it's you know it's easy to stand up and do what you know how to do as a teacher. Right. Right? You can carry the day. You have all done it. You've had to do it for a number of years. It takes a lot of time preparation wise to prepare a lesson when the kids have responsibility. But the energy, you're the one that's spending more the energy now. Right. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Great. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. That concludes my comments. I need to back and balance my time, Madam President. Thank you, Superintendent Wandry. Thank you, Dr. Novak. Aye. Ms. Hofer. Aye. Mr. Lipka. Aye. Dr. Watson. Aye. Mrs. Lavar. Aye. Ms. Montana. Aye. Ms. Collins is aye. Mr. Novak. 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 Mr. Novak.